Hello again, everybody. I'm Jamie. And I'm John. And I'm Justin. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. If you're a big Elvis fan like us, this is your society, our society, the EAP Society. If you're enjoying the EAP Society, be sure to like, share, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. When we hit 20,000 subscribers, we're going to give away this item that personally belonged to Elvis Presley uh, for about 12 years or so, roughly. And, uh, for about 12 minutes. <laughs> about 12 minutes. Yeah, yeah. No, it's from 1956. He owned it until like 71, 72, something like that. And somebody's going to win that. If you want to be a member of the EAP Society, members get ad-free videos, extended videos, all kinds of bonus exclusive videos and content and more. Go to EAPsociety.com, click on Become a Member, and become a member of the EAP Society to be on the ground floor. Today, we are talking to Justin Gosman and uh, from the TCB cast... So welcome, Justin. Hey, happy to be here. Awesome. Yeah, man. Like you're our guest number one outside of the Kelly family. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm honored. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. And uh, of course, a lot of you remember this is technically not your first time on the show. It's true. Uh, the very first time was when we went on Instagram and did a live because Facebook sucks. Uh, we went on uh, live on Instagram. Or we tried to get Facebook to work and it would not cooperate whatsoever. And so we were on Instagram and we were talking about the Elvis movie and uh, Justin hopped on and we we're like, hey, you know what? Come on in here and we'll talk. And then it just ended up being the full conversation. Had so much fun. Yeah. And you added a lot of really neat context and stuff to the conversation. Really Absolutely. appreciate it. It was completely, un like, it was just kind of a spur of the moment thing. And it was lovely and wonderful and awesome. And ever since then, we've been saying, Justin, you got to come, we got to find a way to get you down here to be on the show because we want to do more in house interviews and things like that and talking to people. And we were obviously really love the TCB cast, and I, I've really enjoyed being on the show. Yeah. And it's just really, really cool. So anyway, so just wanted to say welcome formally yeah. to the EAP Society. Thank you. Yeah, and um, Jamie, we've had we had you our first year. Yeah. And that was now oh, five and a half years ago now. Wow, you guys the, have been at it for a long time. time By the time this it. drops, probably closer to six, I would imagine. Yeah. So it's so been... When, what time of year did you just start? Oh, let's see. We started, I think, February 2018. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So we've been at this now for quite a while. Uh, weirdly, it feels like it has been a lot, but also it's just kind of flown by. Yeah. Uh, par partly because we lost a couple years in the middle there. Exactly. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> But it's so great to be here on the set. And, like, the set is, like, it's got, I love the season two glow up. It's great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, glow up, that's beautiful. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so uh, TCB Cast is uh, an unofficial Elvis Presley fan podcast that Gurdip Ladar and I started back in 2018. Uh, we were both just fans of listening to other podcasts. And Gurdip went on to the Elvis subreddit uh, one day and was like, hey, why are there no Elvis podcasts? Right. Yeah. Because at the time, there weren't any Elvis podcasts. <laughs> other right. than Graceland had uh, a very limited run, one that they did. Sure. Uh, that, you know, the episodes were relatively short. And they covered mostly a lot of just what was going on at Graceland or what was really recent Elvis news at the time. Right. right. It was sort of like a newsletter podcast. Yeah, exactly yeah. like that. And there wasn't really any that were for in-depth discussions on Elvis's music, on his movies, anything like that. And so he said, why aren't there any? And I was like, I, I don't know. And he's like, well, does, do you want to start one? And I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> he was not the first person I had the idea to do the show with. There was a friend of mine who uh, was going to be in a short film that I directed. And we had talked about potentially doing an Elvis podcast, but it didn't end up working out. Um, so I had just not pursued it any further until Gurdip basically had the idea again, and we started it, and just haven't stopped. It's a weekly show, well. and um, John, we've had you on now since you guys started. EAP That's right. Society. Yeah. We yep. did a review of Loving You at the end of 2022, which was a fantastic two-parter. We dug into a Call from Mitch Miller, which was the short story it was based on, yeah. from an issue of Good Housekeeping magazine. <laughs> yeah, man, when you sent me that uh, story to read, like I had no idea that there was anything that existed before Loving You that would yeah. become the story. Right. Yeah. And so that was like really revealing to get to read that. Yeah. yeah. Great episodes, by the way. If you oh. guys haven't uh, seen them, go over to TCB Cast. Look up our episodes. Lots of the other episodes are great, too. <laughs> oh, Don't yeah. get me wrong, but... 
it's it's worth a listen. Those it was so much fun though. Yeah. You have to check out the TCB cast. It's marvelous. It's wonderful. And yeah, it's it's really cool. Yeah, and and part of the reason that we got going the way the the direction that we take because it's not that far removed from what you guys do. Yeah. In yeah. terms of discussions, like this is a podcast with the video on top of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ours is a little more tightly edited because it's audio only. Right. So I can trim out parts that are you know maybe a little looser, or I can tighten things up as needed. Um, but I've really got it down to a system where, you know, whatever episode uh, comes out each week um, usually takes me about twice as long as the final product is to actually do the editing part. Oh, yeah. And then uh, obviously there is all the time for the recording itself, which is real time. And then all the research that goes into it, because we do f full research on each of the topics that we're going to do each week. Um, and so we've covered a lot over the last five years. And I got to give a shout out to Ryan Drosty, who is uh, the third chair uh, for TCB Cast. He's been there since year one as well. Uh, and Beck Wiles, who joined, I think at the end of 2021, um, and she has become uh, an amazing asset as well over the last couple of years. Yeah. I love listening to you and Beck, uh, especially. You guys uh, have a very good uh, chemistry. On, on yeah, your, yeah no, it's, awesome. it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have covered uh, movies about Elvis. We've covered movies starring Elvis. We've covered recording sessions, albums, uh, pretty much any topic mostly related to Elvis you can think of. We've probably touched on some of it. Um but yeah, so that that's kind of where TCB Cast is sitting at this point in in 2022. Um, but we're really happy for the the support that we've gotten from our listener base. Yeah. Um, and our our ultimately our goal, you know, as you guys have talked about, your goals for EAP Society is really making sure that Elvis history is preserved. Yep. You know, right. at the end of the day, um, and for us, our goal is more: how can we talk about Elvis's history in such a way that um, we're contextualizing it from a modern perspective, which not everyone will agree with sometimes. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. But also in such a way that people who are maybe not as specifically interested in Elvis to begin with uh, can still find something interesting from it. Right. So a lot of times we're talking about things that are around Elvis. And so it, yeah. it's, if, if you really liked these guys as deep dive into the hound dog, uh, episode you did, yeah. that's more in line with, I think kind of what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're, we're, it, it maybe not quite, it's always, it always comes back to Elvis at the end of the day. Oh, sure. Right. Of um, but we'll go off on some wild tangents. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, right. that's, like, that's honestly, some of the tangents, are things that I learn a lot from. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I love I you guys are really good at uh, providing a very full sense of the context of the times. We try to. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and like um so a uh, friend of uh mine Rabia has a Frank Sinatra show that she does yeah. uh with a friend of hers and so the the two co-hosts came of this uh Frank Sinatra podcast suddenly came on and we did a 6-hour review of Clambake. Wow. <laughs> and we did the most extensive deep dive on the film Clambake that I think anybody on planet Earth has ever done. <laughs> we were I literally worked out the scientific formula for goop. <laughs> there you go, man. I love it. <laughs> that is phenomenal. <laughs> You know, and can I'll, you fit that into a song? Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. tried. They tried. They really did. Glycol oxy octanoic phosphate. You know that was, and it's transcribed so many, so many places on the internet, and it's just not right. And you actually like have to like work out what it is, and all those words actually do mean things in science. Wow, well, that kind of astounds me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they just don't necessarily like add up to exactly what goop is in the movie. Right, right. But it's kind of close when you actually dig into it. It's kind of fascinating. Okay, since, since now since we have video on the show, we need to make this stuff and put it on a boat. <laughs> Are we gonna do like a like one of those David Letterman things? Yeah, we can have yeah, a guest yeah. make it make a bacon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll make human tricks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this is gonna be like this is gonna be like the Elvis edition of MythBusters. Yeah, where it's like, does this work? Does this work? Yeah, and yeah, uh, and uh, yeah. Well, the hilarious part with a dummy. So in case the boat just completely discombobulates, so we're that okay. was one thing that we dug up that was fascinating too. Is that you know uh, the other co-host of the show, Felix. He was, they were pointing out 
you know, a, a making a joke at the end of that film where it's like, oh, what if, what if he gets to the to the race and the boat just breaks up? Yeah. Like, wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> You know, if the goop just doesn't work right, and it right. falls apart in the water, <laughs> like they had kind of been foreshadowing, like, oh, there's all this trouble about, like, oh, if it touches water, it falls apart and it right. doesn't work. And they were like, what if, what if that what if that happens? And I'm like, well, funny you say that. The guy who actually drove the boat for Elvis in that movie died because his boat broke up. Oh, my gosh. He could have used real goop. You know, I'm not to make light of a, a man what? who actually died. Right. That's crazy. But, like, it, it was fascinating that they made that joke and yeah. then it became like, oh, actually, yeah, that <laughs> was a real thing. Oh man! Um, but we do crazy deep dives like that. So that's cool. Yeah, it's cool. So, like I said, definitely check out the TCB cast. It's a nice sort of, uh, sort of a uh, of a sister mission in a sense to, yeah. to what we're doing, and, and kind of like uh, brings a wider scope because we touch on some things, uh, but yeah, we've got such. Such a broad range of stuff that 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 we do that it intersects in mm. really cool places, yeah. which is really neat. I think it'd be fun at some point to uh, get more of the uh, TCB cast and have like a broad discussion, like panel I, discussion. Yeah, 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 like a panel discussion. I mean, the folks are from you know desperate yeah. disparate places in the world, but it would be fun to get as many folks together as possible because, I mean, Elvis nerds. Yeah. yeah, there's exactly. nothing better than having a group of Elvis nerds and just just having fun with it. So yeah. I tell you what, we are going to continue this discussion uh, with Justin when we come back from these messages. All right, we are back with Justin Gosman, and we've been talking about the TCB cast and uh, everything that the uh, the cast has been doing and what their mission is and the mission statement and a lot of the good folks that also work on it with you. Shout out to everybody else from the TCB cast. Thank you for everything that you do. Absolutely. Because we really appreciate that, and uh, we like seeing... Uh, we like seeing other Elvis nerds uh, getting out there and really doing and uh, expressing themselves and really diving into these topics as well. So, yeah. So, Justin, let's... Uh... Let's go back a little bit. Tell tell us a little bit about how you became an Elvis fan. Yeah, uh, so I came along much later than you guys did. <laughs> and you guys are relatively young Elvis fans. Um, but I became an Elvis fan in the early 2000s. Oh, wow. Um, I was, you know, in uh, probably 10, 11, 12 years old in that range. And, um, you know, my grandparents were of the age where they... I'd grown up in the 50s, you know, they were teenagers or young adults in the 50s. And so my grandparents had always had, a, you know, cassette tapes and records and things like that. My grandpa, in fact, had copies of G.I. Blues and Elvis's Golden Records, but they weren't like crazy big Elvis fans. Right, yeah. Um, but Elvis had just kind of always been there around me. You know, you always right. hear him in pop culture and things like that. And for some reason, as a young kid, I started to get fascinated with 50s culture, hmm. uh, you know, watching films like Grease and yeah. uh, TV shows like Happy Days, uh, films like American Graffiti, you know, and just sort of this overlap of pop culture that was about the 1950s. It wasn't even right. from the 1950s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the nostalgia from 20 years later. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But it was, you know, and then another 20 years on top of that, m just me falling in love with all of that fed into me uh you know eventually falling in love with elvis's music and i uh my mom's then boyfriend at the time gave me a copy of the artist of the century set oh well wow. on wow. cassette and he basically his, his he I, I vividly remember that he brought the set over and he was like i hear that you like elvis give this a listen that's cool. Yeah, but yeah, so Artist of the Century was my gateway into Elvis, seriously. Yeah, that's and awesome. And then from there, it was, okay, mom has G.I. Blues and Elvis's Golden Records. And then it was my mom. She's a huge fan of, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Briar Model Horses. They're sort of Vaguely. a plasticky uh, model horses. Yeah. The collectibles, you know, highly valued. You know, they're a whole thing unto themselves. Sure. But she would often go to antique stores to look for that stuff. Well, and as I became an Elvis fan, I was like, well, I'll look for Elvis stuff while I'm there. Yeah, look yeah, Look for Elvis yeah. records. Right. And so I started growing my collection of Elvis records. And so that's where I started picking up, you know, just whatever happened to be there. And 
I didn't have a lot of money growing up. I came from a family that was not particularly well off, very low income, low income housing and stuff like that. So I just made do with whatever I could get. Yeah. And so if I could find, you know, I, I couldn't afford, you know, you'd go into certain anti and there was a bubble at the time. So you'd go in and you'd see a copy of an Elvis record and it might be a little overpriced. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> at that time. Happened a few times. Yeah. Um, but every once in a while you could find one for a good price. So I'd snatch it up whenever I could with, you know, my, my uh, allowance money or whatever, or just, you know, being begging really nicely. Yeah. Um, and my grandmother encouraged me as well to get into Elvis because she thought it was very cool that, you know, this young kid was really interested in Elvis and, yeah. and into 50s culture. Uh, and when I was in seventh grade, I was so into Elvis that uh, I did actually get up on stage at, uh, we did a, a, you know, it's just a middle school concert thing like that. Yeah. But it was, uh, you know, one of those programs where they span the, you know, the decades. Yeah. And they naturally had an Elvis section. They needed a solo singer. So I got up and I sang nice. Teddy Bear. That's oh, cool. that's awesome. And it made the front page of the local newspaper. Well done, well done. <laughs> that's super cool, man. Do you, have, so do you have video of that? I don't have video of the seventh grade one. I do have video of the eighth grade one because they did it the following year too. It was a different song, Jailhouse Rock. That's cool. And that just like fed into like, okay, I got such a big reaction the last time. I'm going to go all out on Jailhouse yeah, Rock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it just kept continuing to grow. And so by the time, you know, sixth, seventh grade, I'm in, uh, we're talking 2001, 2002, 2003, which as you guys know, peak revival of Elvis in the early 21st century. Yeah. You know, you're talking 30 number one hits. Yep. You're talking second to none, a little less conversation, Lilo and Stitch. Right. So it was not as uncool to yeah. be a fan of Elvis. Yeah. yeah and we even lived then, the dark ages. Of yeah. That. And even yeah. then, <laughs> there was still a lot of, you know, cracking jokes about Elvis. Yeah. And no, Elvis died on the toilet right, and all right. of that. Uh, a lot of that, those negative stereotypes were still in God, there. I haven't heard that in so long. I just had like flashback ah, yeah. when I used to hear that all the time. Yeah. Just like, oh, I used to just want to beat the holy. Anyway, mm -hmm. the, uh, oh gosh, that's, yeah, that's really fascinating. So most of your early listening experience after that, was that vinyl? Was that cassettes? Was it CDs? It was anything I could get my hands on because I did pick up cassettes. I had Madison Square Garden. I had uh, the 68 Special on cassette. Oh, man. Vinyl, I picked up. Uh, Camdens were obviously cheap. I had a oh, lot yeah. of Camdens. Yeah, cool. And the Guitar Man album yeah. was a big one for me. That's super cool. Which, because I experienced it so early in my fandom, yeah. and I didn't know the context right. of when it came out, what it was trying to do, I just assumed these are as Elvis recorded it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I actually have quite an affinity for that album. That's cool. Um, yeah. Shout out to everybody who's <laughs> who's into that album because we got a lot of comments. We did the remix. We did like, well, technically what we did we did two remix, uh, two mi remix episodes. Yeah, yes. that we turned mm -hmm. into like I don't know four, four. or five. Yeah, it was four. Which is split it. One of my favorite episodes that you guys did because Thank when you. I in the mid two thousands. I became fascinated by Elvis remixes. So I had a huge collection on a hard drive of every Elvis remix I could find. Oh, wow. Like all the MP3s and stuff like that. I, I remember, I you got you has mentioned it in passing, the, the DNA project of remix yes. of Robert Nash. Yeah. I still the, love that thing. The only way you could get it was it was a Walmart calling card that had a code on the back that you had to go onto a website and redeem it. That's why yeah. I never had it. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, iTunes for a very short while did sell it as yeah. well. You can, it was an iTunes exclusive yeah. for a very short while, and that was yanked off of the thing. That's how I have it. Yeah, that's and cool. then there was also one by uh, Jason Nevins at the time. Yes, I remember that one. Yep, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was more rock oriented. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, so I got so into the remixes and just the idea of like, oh, they're trying to make Elvis cool and you know modern, that I, I kind of took it upon myself to start archiving Elvis remixes and stuff like that. And I didn't really have an outlet for it. Right. <laughs> um, and in the meantime, obviously, I'm reading Last Train to Memphis. I'm reading Careless Love. I'm reading all the books that I can get my hands on. Elvis, What Happened. My dad gave me a copy of that. Maybe not the best read for, you know, a 12 or 13-year-old. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, not so much. But it didn't destroy my, my love of Elvis regardless. That's cool. Um, but as I went along, I, I found that I was... And I, I we were actually going through Artists of the Century... I think last year, Gurdip and I on the show, and I realized that a lot of what 
drew me to the stories behind the songs come from the booklets in that set because yeah. every single uh, song in the booklet has a little write up. And I was it Goralnik who did the write ups in that? I think, I think that most, yeah. If he might, didn't do all of them, he did most of them. I believe. Yeah. yeah. But just hearing, uh, reading the stories behind each of those songs so early kind of instilled in me the idea that these songs were not just Elvis songs. Yeah. They were part of a, a, a larger story. Right. It's like a folk continuum. Yeah. Yeah. And so there were, you know, proper na proper nouns uh, dropped into, uh, you know, the back of my mind, you know, Arthur Gunter and yeah. Big Boy Crudup and Bill Monroe and all these influences on Elvis that I eventually did seek out once I had the internet and could, uh, you know, yeah, just dig and dig and dig for information. I mean, the internet was such a boon. Um, I think I talked on our very first episode, Jordan's Elvis World website was such a huge... Uh, oh, I remember yeah. Jordan's Elvis World very yeah, well. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, by We're, the way, uh, Jordan has been having some health issues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. there's a link if, uh, I'm going to, we're going to play this pretty early in season two. So if it hasn't, if, if he still is in need of this, we're going to actually put the link in the description. I'm glad you mentioned Jordan, cause mm -hmm. I wanted to make a mention of this too. Uh, that's, uh, so if anybody wants to help, uh, donate for his stuff, he's been around the Elvis world for a very long time and uh, could really use your help. So if you've got a uh, few extra dollars or whatever you can uh, throw his way, uh, there's some uh, treatments or something that is going through is going to be very, very, very expensive. And yeah. so uh, help out if you can. So yeah. continue. And, and speaking of Jordan, like his work on the Elvis fandom, like he basically built the online Elvis community. Oh, sure. That was like singularly. The, that was the first Elvis website I ever found. Yeah, yep. without a doubt. You know, and and the fact that he runs the hosting for so many Elvis fan yeah. sites. Yeah, you know, uh, you wouldn't have. I can guarantee you, you wouldn't have TCB Cast if it weren't for Jordan's work in the Elvis community. Wow. Oh yeah, there were so many that you know, he was so influential on. And even if he didn't build it directly or or something like that, he was influential on making sure that other places knew about. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, I mean. Kavan Bud found an audience partially because of like the message boards and things that he's that yeah. he's currently hosting for. Uh, Sebastian was able to get uh, traction on like some of his opinions and some of the stuff that his uh, his work. I mean, I found ElvisRecordings.com thanks to Jordan's sites. So yes, it's that's yeah, that's a huge. That's a really great point. I'm glad you mentioned. Yeah, that. and Elvis Recordings was another early website that I got access to finally when I got a personal computer yeah. finally um and then eventually it just fed into my fascination with oh there's the, all these alternate takes it's the songs that you know but they're slightly different yeah exactly <laughs> and that's yep. a whole rabbit hole yeah, yeah. yeah. and so um I'm buried in that rabbit hole the, 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 <laughs> the, right the fandom <laughs> continued on and uh you know obviously you, you watch the movies and i became fascinated by the stories behind the movies yeah and i wanted to you know i always thought that they were very much uh, downplayed by other Elvis fans, you know, and just like, oh, those are bad, you know. Oh, they, yeah. they aren't deserving of, you know, the attention. Yeah. You know, uh, you have your fans of the, the 70s and the concerts and, and the whole spectacle and the fans of the early rock Elvis. Mm -hmm. There wasn't really many people speaking up for the middle section. True. Right? And so I, maybe it wasn't so much that I loved the movies particularly, but it, I was just like, these these get beat up a lot. Yeah, Someone should do. say something about these. Yeah. And so uh, in 2016, uh, I did the first thing I did online, which was called uh, Blue Suede Reviews. Originally, it was a video essay series focusing on Elvis's movies. Uh, and it, originally, it was intended to be more comedic, it, more like uh, other video reviewers online, like the Nostalgia Critic or oh, yeah. Angry Video Game Nerd or something Ooh, where you poke a little stuff. more fun at yeah. Adam. And then as I got into it, I was like, no, I don't want to do that with these. Like, someone needs to make, like, a serious point about these. Right, right. Um, and so around the time that I got to, to Jailhouse Rock and I kind of hit, like, a note in that one where it was a little more, like, hmm, thoughtful uh, about the idea of Elvis as mythology and Elvis as, you know, the image um, and trying to take that, I, I realized that there was more that I wanted to say about Elvis. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have an outlet for it. And... Uh, I ended up abandoning the series because on YouTube, obviously, at the time, I was using copyrighted content, sure. getting content ID flags. Uh, and so I just kind of abandoned the series around the time of Flaming Star. 
And in the meanwhile, I've been working on a short film that I was like, okay, I'm going to say something about Elvis. This will maybe be my statement. And so I made a short film called Never Been to Graceland. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. And uh, Jamie, one of your songs is actually in it, as, as you know. Indeed. Uh, but that was something we worked out after the film had already been finished and things like that. But it, it largely is about, you know, being an Elvis fan uh, nowadays and feeling like you don't fit in with certain other groups of the fandom or subgroups of the fandom. Yeah. yeah. And just going, the music means something to me. Doesn't that mean something? Doesn't that account for something? Yeah, yeah. That's like, see, that's so much of what drives this too. Yeah, yeah. Because like, most of what I do, and I've been writing some stuff that we're probably going to use on the show at some point uh, about specific songs because I just want to account for the feelings that I'm feeling. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, like what is it about this? Because I know it's there. Because yeah. other people will feel it too. You right. Know? And 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 music criticism has been kind of stilted, I think, because. You know, so so many rock critics, I think, don't really understand what direction they're approaching the criticism from. It's like, yeah. is it literary criticism? Are we analyzing lyrics? Are we analyzing concepts with albums? But no, like, in since we invented this thing called recorded sound, the actual master is the work of art. Yeah. yeah. It deserves its own form of appreciation. Mm-hmm. And the language of that is so early in its development. Yeah. That uh, it's yep. really, a, it's, that's a, a kind of criticism that needs to be explored more, I think. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So that, that kind of led into, um, you know, I, I, didn't, I made that in 2017 is when that came out. So that was the, what, third? No. What anniversary was that? Say, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten. Fortieth? Fortieth. Fortieth anniversary. Yeah. So that came out, yeah, we premiered it uh, on the fortieth anniversary of his passing on the sixteenth. And then I just kind of sat with it, and I never went back to Blue Suede Reviews at the time. I was like, well, maybe I've said all I need to say about Elvis. Yeah. And then Gurdip came along and asked the right question at the right time. Right. And I was like, well, maybe I'm not done, you know? Yeah. That's and awesome. So it's just been kind of go, go, go from there. Um, but I found so many friends that I didn't think that I would meet, like you guys, yeah. Yeah. in the Elvis community. That's the thing about the Elvis yeah. world, man. See... I tell you what, hold that thought. Okay. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back, and uh, we were just getting ready to talk about all of the people, and we've said this on the channel before, but all of the folks that we have gotten to know through Elvis. Yeah. I met my wife because of Elvis. Yeah. And, I, and something else that I was thinking about that, uh, John, you said this about Elvis before, mm-hmm. and this is the fascinating sort of cyclical nature of this. So, you know, when Elvis came around, he was influenced by all of these seemingly disparate things, right. which also have sub uh, sub influences and all of this kind of things themselves. But there wasn't a space for Elvis. And so he made a space for himself. Exactly. And so what's fascinating is that is kind of like what we've been doing, what you've been doing and what we've been doing. Yeah. It's making a space for ourselves, but also wanting to make sure that other people, they have a space here too. Yeah. And that's why we tell people, hey, if you agree with us, disagree with us, whatever, let us know in the comments, you know, don't don't be a jerk to each other. Don't be you know. Don't be stupid. But everybody everybody be open to everybody else because this is a space for everybody. And that's one thing I think is, if you are familiar with because like John and I can definitely attest to this and you can too, uh, even though it's a little bit later in the cycle for you. But like, uh, if you've spent enough of your formative years being with your interests being maligned, misunderstood, and all this kind of stuff, you emerge two ways. Uh, Well, you can either internalize that, and that's really painful. Don't do that. The other thing that, you know, the other thing you can do is you can eventually say, screw it, I'm just going to like what I like, and that's it. But the other thing is you can turn that into, I don't want to say an anthem or something, but the you don't want anybody else to feel like that because you know what that feels like yeah. you know what that under that misunderstanding feels like and you don't want anybody else to be to go through that 
And so that's one of the things that, you know, that's why we talk about so many different things and we express a lot, try to express as many different uh, perspectives and viewpoints within as possible. Um, and so I think that's really cool that you touched on that because that's, you know, and in doing that, you meet so many other people mm -hmm. and the Elvis fandom becomes like a family. That's exactly the point I was about to make. So go ahead. That, like, you know, I grew up around Memphis and uh, my dad used to take me to Elvis week after I became an Elvis fan at a very young age. And I would get to meet these people from all over the world yeah. who had little in common besides Elvis, but they were like my family. I yeah. love seeing these people every year. They're mm -hmm. better than some of your family because yeah, you, no, you, totally. you actually have something in common with yeah. them. <laughs> you know, it's like, honestly, I looked more forward to going to Elvis week. It's like, it was like dragging me, pulling teeth to go to a family reunion. Oh, but, yeah. oh Elvis week? Let's go. 13 <laughs> hours in a car. Let's do this. And, you know, and, uh, you know, I've, I've got a coloring book. Let's make this happen. And because uh, I was really, I was three the first year I went down to Elvis week. So the uh, 1983, well, yeah, three or four. No, 1984. 84 is the first year. Anyway, but yeah, that's exactly it. Because you, you, all of these different people and they all, Elvis is the reason that they all met. Yeah. You know, like, you know, we, well, we all met because of Elvis. Mm -hmm. So many other folks out there have gotten to know each other, whether it be online or or whatever about Elvis. And like we were saying before, think about how you felt when Elvis was put down around you or when, uh, you know, things that you were interested in were slighted or, or whatever. And we try to do that as much as possible. And, uh, you know, apologies for folks that, that were really like, hey, we like the Guitar Man album. Shut up, guys. <laughs> you know, I, w nothing that we say is meant as a you shouldn't like this. I'm not going to tell anybody they shouldn't like something Heck Elvis. Yeah. Like, if you love the Guitar Man or Viva Elvis, I am proud for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this, that's the thing. Enjoying each other's enjoyment yeah. Uh, because there are other uh, there are other spaces, even Elvis spaces, where there's a lot of judgment, mm -hmm. and you know you can be you know the, we want to help create a space where you're free to give your uh, you're free to give your opinions uh, as long as you're you know but definitely leave room for other people's interests and don't make each other feel small because yeah. that's. Because you know what that feels like. Because all right, I want to touch on something you're saying and something that you said. Yeah. And um, I'm sorry for all this. It's just a you were, habit I picked yeah, up. Now. You were talking about feeling disconnected from uh, the experiences of older Elvis fans, which is something that I agree with. And you know, we grew up at an interesting time because we grew up yeah. after it all happened. Yeah. There was no expectations or narrative or disappointments that were associated to our you know understanding mm -hmm. of elvis like i was a i was introduced to elvis through elvis on tour so mm. 70s elvis was literally the first elvis i was aware of yeah and then i remember like when i was a, you know a kid i would get cassettes that were mostly 56 songs but the picture mm -hmm. on the cover would be from tickle me yeah and so when i saw elvis and tickle me from you know represented on this cover it didn't represent hollywood like you know, ruining something that used to be great. I just thought he looked cool. Yeah. yeah. You know? So, like, Elvis has kind of been a unified thing from my perspective yeah. from a very early from age. From the beginning. It's yeah. homogenized. Or not homogenized, but it's 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 been put in a blender to such a degree that there you don't have those references that older fans would uh, greater. Right. You and know, mm -hmm. You had to learn to separate it. Exactly. And, yeah. like, but some of those opinions did rub off on me when I was a kid because I sort of learned to, like, think, oh, you know, the movies are junk. Right? Yeah. You yeah. internalize those criticisms of those things. Right. Because even people who loved Elvis were saying that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. like, it must be true. Yeah. Right. And then it was only later when I, I would, like, listen to some of the soundtracks, like Fun in Acapulco and Nap. I was like, you know, there's good stuff on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's, not, like, it's not all up to the standard of what he was doing in the studio at the time. But but I, I I can appreciate it. So like, there's there is something about seeing it from a more distant perspective. I think mm -hmm. that can make you appreciate things that you know fans at the time would have had reason to be skeptical right. of. But oh yeah, can maybe reassess now. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think that also you know, it's I don't want to say it's it's good because like those fans that that were around at the time were 
a little bit traumatized by <laughs> what was happening in the, in the, sure. and the pattern of it. But I think that because the fan feeling and because all of that is part of historical context, right? which is, you know, that's just as much historical context mm -hmm. as the sessions, which should not be edited. <clears throat> and I'm just going to keep barking <laughs> on that for the rest of my damn life. They, you know, that is part of that. That is part of the larger historical context and narrative. So all of us can kind of learn from each other and learn uh, and both appreciate uh, the other person's thoughts and feelings on these different things. And it can also enrich our own and that it all just kind of feeds into everything together mm -hmm. and it gets you a grander picture of the entire whole, which I think is enriching for fans of every age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the thing for me that I struggled with for the longest time with the Elvis community and the thing that I've heard the most from a lot of our listeners for, of TCP cast, and especially after Baz Luhrmann's Elvis, a lot of our newer listeners who are new fans, yeah. is that the Elvis fandom can be very intimidating. Oh, oh totally. Yeah. Because there are a lot of old, deep wounds in the Elvis community. Absolutely. And a lot of those run so deep that they can cause fractures in a really sad, but also kind of profound way. Yeah. And I think it's important for especially new fans, not necessarily just younger, because I've had a lot of listeners who are go who have wrote in and said, I used to be there like when Elvis was coming up. Like I had a we have a wonderful supporter of our show who just wrote in recently. She's of the age where she would be considered a first generation fan, but she just right. didn't really pay attention to Elvis at the time. Yeah. Right. But a upon watching that film and having that interest invigorated, yeah, went. I missed out on something all those years ago, yeah. and now I can't get enough of it. Yeah. And it can be intimidating for anyone to come into a fandom that's been going on for 70 years almost at this point. <laughs> sure. And to try to figure out where to start unpacking things, because mm -hmm. right. there's so many different perspectives. And I think the biggest thing is to for new new fans and old fans alike is just to remember to listen to each other. Yeah. And give each other the space to be heard. Totally. Right. You know? And it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter what sexuality you are. Exactly. Everyone can have an appreciation for Elvis. Sure. And your perspective will give you a different insight into Elvis. Yeah. You know? And if there is a, you know, there are queer Elvis fans who have fascinating perspectives on Elvis and where he slots into queer culture back then and now and how yeah. his you know his sense of fashion and stuff was very much ahead of its time in yeah. the 50s and things like no that no doubt about it exactly yeah. you know <laughs> and, and you know even you know elvis fans of color may have different perspectives and i i just think that elvis can still unite yeah in a way and that that's yeah. one thing that i really appreciate about baz Luhrmann's film is that the message of that film among many of the themes was that music is a power, a superpower that can unite us all. Yes. At the end exactly. of the day. Whether, you know, and it doesn't matter what background you're from, what religion you are, anything, you can still connect with the music and that music can matter to you. Yeah. You know? And one of the things that I, one of the reasons that I think Elvis has such a broad appeal is because like we were talking about making a space for himself because there was no space because he like had these he sort of defined himself you know yeah sometimes in in contradiction to the main mm -hmm. society and sometimes uh in, you know in a way that would not conflict but he, he defined himself in a way where he's just very much himself yeah, yeah. and and that that sense of identity, that sense of being who you are, whether other people like it or not, mm -hmm. I think is, I think is something a lot of people can identify with. Yeah. Oh, huge! You know, it's I, something and, and admire really. Yeah, yeah. well, and, and and especially in the context of not trying to hurt anybody, not trying to be against anybody, you just are who you are. Yeah, and exactly. that, that that kind of thing. You know, the 
Because sometimes people hear, oh, I'm just going to be who I am. If you don't like it, that, not, no, we're not talking about that. And, you know, was, Elvis himself was quick to point out, like, uh, when the on tour mm-hmm. interviewers were asking him, did he dress different in high school? He's like, yeah, I, I guess you could say that. But it wasn't because I was trying to be better than anybody. It's just something I wanted to do. Exactly. You, know? you, you just, you, you enjoy what, and, then, and that's kind of what I mean by when I say that, you know, let people dig what they dig. Let them enjoy what they enjoy. Right. And, and in life and in their fandom and... Yeah, uh, and we can introduce each other to we we all as fans can introduce each other to other aspects and things of Elvis that we might not have thought of before. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Doesn't mean that you have to. Uh, doesn't mean that you have to internalize all of that. But you can consider it and look at it. And you go, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Not, maybe not. Again, remixes are not as much our thing. <laughs> uh, but I made remixes. But, Me too, so, man. So, uh, yeah. So I made yeah, Mike, the Mike McCoy remixes. As a matter of fact, Club Elvis used to play half of the 17-minute long GI Blues remix that I made. I tried to <laughs> shove every... I, I This is my goal. I tried to shove every song from a soundtrack into one big medley and see if uh, I could make it fly. <laughs> and Girls, Girls, Girls was like 13 and a half minutes. Mm. And considering that I did this in like mm, t- t- 2003, or something like that. It really wasn't bad. But I walked into Club Elvis uh, that they do it that they used to do at Graceland. I think they still do it. Walked into Club Elvis and they start playing like a uh, thing from GI Blues. And then it goes to the next song. I'm like, wait, no way, no way. And I walk over and I'm like, do you know what this is? Yeah, I got it online. And yeah, it's a Mike McCoy. I'm like, I'm Mike McCoy. And they're like, <laughs> no way. And they say. We only play about half of it because it's a little long. It's like, it's 17 minutes. You, you do whatever you want. I don't care. And so, yeah. No, that's... But I'm saying... only reason I... Sorry, I went on another tangent. The only reason I say that is because, uh, I mean, we can... You know, other people are like, well, no, I really like the remixes. And, I mean, I can enjoy them. Uh, more so than John, but but it, but we but we do this. When we we can. Hey, I made re- re- remixes too, man. Right. Uh, some someday I'll drop my remix of Lonesome Cowboy on the world. Yeah. Nice. I love it. Um, but I say that I only say that because we can look at those different things and have appreciation for those different uh, perspectives, even if we do not 100% internalize them for our own viewpoint. Yeah, no, sure. And so, yeah. So, we are going to talk about this. We have one more segment for you, at least. You never know how these things go when we come right back from these messages. Hello, everybody. We are back talking to Justin Gosman, and uh, this has been a wonderful experience talking about like uh how much we all kind of have in common even if we differ in even if differing in viewpoints how we approach those viewpoints and the viewpoints of others and what we can learn from that as a larger fan community that's why i think you know regardless of what you might think of, of the new movie um i was actually surprised at the number of people it sort of didn't affect in the negative way I was expecting Mm -hmm. outside of the Elvis community. They just kind of digested it. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Because I was expecting a very different reaction. Uh, And they, you know, people touched on certain things, you know, but I, you know, those conversations and those larger things are something that I think would be really good, not just in the context of Elvis, but in the context of, uh, I mean, I mean, life in general, but especially music in general and musical culture in general, right. and where we all sit and where uh, what all of our perspectives are and how much, um, how much everything just sort of in, sort of informs everything else, even in ways that we don't realize. Mm-hmm. And that's the big thing when when Elvis gets criticism. It's important to keep perspective and remember that Elvis is literally still like he's Elvis Presley. Right. Like he is the most popular musician essentially of all time. Right. Right. You know, he's, you know, the best selling solo artist of all time. Yeah. You know, all of his, uh, you know, success and all of the films and all of the programs made about him and all the books written about him and the endless industry around him is not going to go away because someone says something mean about Elvis online. Sure. You know, and, you know, one thing that you guys talked about recently on the Hound Dog episode was the truth of the fact that there was exploitation of many artists in Elvis's day. Yeah. And that's an historical fact that we just have to acknowledge. Yeah. And the, the sooner that we readily acknowledge that as Elvis fans, the easier we can start to have conversations about 
where Elvis fits into our understanding of 20th century pop culture and how it informed today's culture. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing, like, if you don't acknowledge those systems and acknowledge the very real grievances created by them, Mm -hmm. then it becomes, it becomes easier for people to try to hold Elvis uh, accountable for the sins of an entire system. Yeah. yeah. He becomes a lightning rod right, yeah. for those yeah, grievances. Yeah. We talk often so much about how he was opening doors. Yeah. And yeah. you hear those artists in old interviews talk about how he was opening doors that had never been opened before. Right, right. You can't talk about how Elvis was so great for opening doors if you don't acknowledge that those doors were closed in the first place and there was a reason for those doors to be closed. Well, I mean, look, Elvis was, at the time that he came about tailor-made for appearing on TV and breaking down barriers in the way that he did. Like, yeah. well, you know, first of all, he's, he's too good looking. Mm-hmm. He is too uh, charismatic of a performer to mm-hmm. exclude from yeah, these systems yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, that were built to kind of... And some of those systems were built against him. Yeah, you know, because no, totally. he, he was considered a hillbilly. Right. Yeah. And so it, he's too good looking to not be included, even by their own standards. Mm-hmm. But his inclusion sort of led to the erosion of a lot of these systems yeah, yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Well, and that's why that's why he was so dangerous. That's why he was seen as so dangerous, because the, I think they intrinsically understood that. And it's made worse. I've said this repeatedly. It's made worse by the fact that he was naturally that. Right. It wasn't, um, you know, I mean... I, I, you know, I, I like Alice Cooper, but for instance, Alice Cooper is a very like, oh, I'm going to do this and this and that. I mean, he's very, he was a very meticulous guy. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he understood what was happening. And he goes, oh, okay, I can do this and this. <laughs> and again, more power to him. Not knock. It's not a knock. But Elvis just kind of was what he was. And that's scarier because it's natural. Right. And yeah. for that, for, for that to be the, the, they saw it coming and, you know, uh, I do have a, a little bit of a of a shift on this sure. idea, but I do want to keep on the topic. I really do. I really am enjoying this. We are going to talk even more about that stuff when we come back from these messages. Do not go away. All right, we are back once again with Justin Gosman, and we've been talking a lot about some of the barriers that fans have put up have been you know, that are not necessarily necessary. I think they're a reaction to what was coming at them from all angles for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like we've I've said several times on the program, I remember the media coming out to some Elvis event and they will find the thing they can ridicule the absolute most. How do we make Elvis fans look like the biggest joke on the planet? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that when a fandom faces that level of social persecution, Mm -hmm. they're going to kind of like circle the wagons and anything that looks like a hit, they're going to like, okay, how do we protect ourselves from this? And that's how that stuff sort of naturally builds up. It's weird to think of an artist who was the biggest selling artist of uh, the 20th century, one of the biggest forces in popular music, as being one of the most underdog socially, mm-hmm. but and artistically, and artistically, yeah. and I think that's a large. I think that's largely because, you know, like we were saying, uh, the system was sort of built against people like him as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe not to the same degree, but it was, and so it's almost like media and some other places are trying to right the wrong of the fact that he made it through the gate. Yeah. <laughs> no, there, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot, there's a lot of cultural sneering of the, the fact that he's a hillbilly who made mm. it big and they don't like that. That's you know? Albert yeah. Goldman's Elvis in a nutshell. I was just exactly. about to say it to you. Yeah, and also I'll add, you know, Elvis, what happens, you know, while that book did have substantial contributions from the West's and Dave Hebler, it's important to note, and this is something that we've talked about on TCB Cast. Orders came from higher up. Oh, yeah, it's sure. World News Corp. It's Rupert Murdoch. It's a larger media issue. You know, it's yeah. it's the idea that Elvis. You know, like like you said, he, he got through the gate. Yeah. That he shouldn't have. Exactly. He shouldn't have because that shouldn't have been allowed. You know, right. in certain 
contingent's eyes. Yep. And so it was sort of a, a course correction, especially in the aftermath of his death. Oh, where, yeah. They were out for blood then. Where it was, you know, the, the fan reaction was understandably a lot of grieving, a lot of lifting of him up as a hero. But there were people that were quick to rush to attack because they just wanted to, like you were talking about, sort of the Mondo Elvis effect of we're going to make these Elvis fans look like fools. Yeah. So many people have been conditioned, and I would say in some in some cases rightfully so, of the idea that if there's any kind of, if there's any kind of, if the, if the armor isn't absolutely spotless, we're dead. Yeah. And we don't matter anymore and we'll be whatever. And for... For that to, for that for the realization for that not to be the case, I I think is uh, is health as a healthy way to go forward, and to not th- to do your best not to think about that because that's decades upon decades of social conditioning that has to be undone, that has to be rolled back and eased out like you know like <laughs> it's kind of like kneading pizza dough right you know it's like all that stuff and that takes time. And we're really lucky to be in a position we're in now where conditions are right to start having more of these conversations. And we're kind of, I mean, you know, generally we don't get too heavy on the show, but, and that's, you know, just. That's my fault. I bring this. No, you know, it's fine. (laughs) This is how TCPA cast sometimes ends up. My bad. (laughs) No, no, it's fine. But no, the only reason I say that is because, uh, you know, because we want everybody to. Uh, we want to kind of ease everybody into these uh, these things and kind of be the starter course mm-hmm. for some of that because we talk about so many different things and there are so many things to kind of to kind of ease into uh, and so many things that have had you know uh, have had you know judgment on them for all kinds of things. I mean, we're mm-hmm. going to look at some of the silliest Elvis products you've ever seen in mm-hmm. your life, and you know and. and we can have a laugh, but it's always meant as good natured. It's yeah. always meant as a, it's it's loving ribbing. It's mm-hmm. it's it's, it's yeah. a it's, it's just not taking ev- everything too seriously. Exactly. Yeah. Elvis himself also was yeah. very it, much exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah. But you know, but as a fandom, the fact that we've the the fact that we've been defensive for so long, yeah. that's a hard that's a hard turn to make. And and it's an understand it's uh, to me it's understandable how we got there, but it's because you know I've been around the thing since I've been around the thing longer than anybody. I've been around since, well, first time I got in an Elvis outfit, I was eleven months old, <laughs> so it's been a while. So uh, I understand those perspectives all very well, and so the need to find the most easy way or the most painless way or the least painful way possible to kind of set the stage so that way we can all kind of, you know, you know, kind of, you know, dig what, what each other's into, kind of like listen to each other. It, 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 that has reverberations beyond simply not crapping on what Elvis product the other person likes. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that has a larger so, social implications. And that's why I say about we, we do it on a lighter level because it sets that tone. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, man. man this has been great. Yes. Oh, I, I, had a, I mean, I, I find myself just listening to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I, and and to, to, to your kind of, you know, wrap up on your point there, it, I, I think it's important for us to remember to not take things so seriously. Because at the end of the day, like, it is Elvis Presley. Yeah. He is someone who is inherently kind of a ridiculous figure. In the best possible way. Okay, I was going to say, you will have to explain that because I know somebody's going to say that. (laughs) What I mean is, it is not possible for someone to be that famous, to be that successful, to be that beloved, and to also make those bizarre of career choices, you know, and and not take it so seriously. Like, this is a man who did own a chimpanzee named Scatter. Exactly. You know, yeah. He owned several chimpanzees. Well, but, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah, and this is a guy who started in harem. Skin. No, I get, I get, and, what, I get what you mean. It's like, it's like the whole reason that I love the uh, and one of my internet avatars is the picture of Elvis in '72 wearing the Superfly coat mm-hmm. and the turban and the sunglasses, and it, I love it because it's just like that's Elvis. That's just yeah. <laughs> that's just him. Yeah, El- Elvis was self-deprecating, and yeah. I, I, 
I think we can safely say the fact that in 2022, the Elvis movie was as successful as it was. We don't have to be afraid anymore. Really? Yeah. Like, Elvis isn't going anywhere. That's perfect. Yeah. Keep, sir, keep, El- keep going. Elvis isn't going anywhere. Yeah. And he's going to be here for a very, very long time. We can rest assured of that. Will it always be on the same level? No. But all that this has done is reassure that Elvis is not going anywhere. No one's getting rid of him. You can't cancel someone who is canceled from the day he came out. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, by every other faction under the sun. Yeah. Um, he is a remarkable artist, and I'm thrilled that we are all connected by him. Yeah. Um, it It's a wonderful society to be in. Yeah. yeah. The EAP Society. Oh, I love it. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I think that the best way to put it is um, Elvis was a giant ball of social contradiction. Yeah. And... And when, you know, the, and, you know, it's funny, people look at the connotative de- connotative definition of ridiculous, and they see it as a very negative thing, which is why I was kind of like, you're going to have to oh, explain yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. So, like, I don't want anybody to think um, that, that that's the what we mean. The denotative definition of uh, ridiculous is just something that is wild and contradictory and is just completely implausible. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so many things that happened in Elvis's life are things that are nigh unrepeatable. Yeah. And all of the things that have happened to so many things that look at the, look at all the things that have happened to us as fans. Right. That we're like, how the heck did that even occur? Yeah. You know, and so the the lives of all of us are on some level again the denotative definition, which means without social context of ridiculous. And in a beautiful way, in a wonderful, beautiful way. And for all of us to embrace that, why well, why I say if you if you love the movies, if you if you love the movies, if you love the wackier songs like we do, if you love the remixes, if you love like love what you love because you love it, if you're not hurting anybody else, dig what you dig just because you dig it and don't there's no such thing as, a uh what's the what, the, what do they call it um uh a guilty pleasure there's no such thing as a guilty pleasure if you enjoy it like don't you worry about it i unabashedly i'm sure i'm gonna get comments about this i unabashedly read and love the twilight series i don't give a flying rats who knows it if it's not hurting anybody else exactly what's the problem and elvis was like that in his life elvis that's exactly the way elvis lived and all of us, if there is one thing above all else to take from the example that he set, it's that. Uh, enjoy the contradiction of life uh, and, you know, enjoy your own contradictions. And just the only the only rule is don't hurt each other. That's it. TCB. TCB. Take care of business. Yep, exactly. And so, yeah. Very cool. All right. Hey, everybody. Justin Gosman of the TCB cast. Uh, we're really happy to have him. We're going to have him on the program a few more times throughout the course of the year. Uh, thank you all so much for checking out the show. We really uh, we really dig each and every one of you. Hope you enjoy. Let us know your favorite things about the Elvis fandom in the comments and maybe things you'd like to see in the Elvis fandom. And who knows, maybe in a future episode, we can kind of start materializing that kind of thing in the community we want to build a community we always say that uh, or i always say at the end of the shows that this is not a well i've been saying it starting this season i should say uh because you're only going to see like two episodes before this airs um this is not just a youtube channel it's a movement and part of the reason i say that is because the I think there's a lot an amazing amount of growth that is still possible within the elvis community in great and beautiful ways to just kind of let the freak fly fly a little bit, you know, and just just be just enjoy being a fan with, and letting go of a lot of the hangups and things like that, while still keeping them in mind and things and understanding that that's that informs where we go and how we approach things moving forward. So you know, keep us you know with an eye to, <laughs> to keep an eye to the past and an eye to the future and and live in the present. Um, 
that's yeah that's all part of this whole kind of thing so anyway i'm jamie and i'm john and I'm Justin. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. whole point of the EAP Society is to make sure that Elvis history is not lost to history and to look at all of the differing and various perspectives within the Elvis community and beyond to make sure that they are available for current generations of fans, future generations of fans, and no matter what your budget is. Because Elvis was always big about being accessible uh, and his music and his art being accessible to everybody no matter what walk, what walk of life they're in. And we like to continue that, pay that forward as best we can. So uh, this is not just a YouTube channel. As I said, it's a movement and that means you. People power is how we make the movement happen. Like, share, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Bring in all the Elvis fans that you can because when we get to 20,000 subscribers, we are going to give away this bad boy. This is a letter opener, a very heavy gold-plated letter opener that uh, was owned by Elvis. It's from 1956. Elvis owned this until about 71, 72. And one of you is going to win this when we hit 20,000 subscribers. So definitely subscribe. Subscribing is free. Doesn't cost a thing. Bring in as many folks as you can over so we can build this big, beautiful Elvis community. It's also free. If you want to help even more, get in on the ground floor. Become a member of the EAP Society. Go to EAPsociety.com and click on Become a Member. Select the tier that you would like and you will get uh, un... I'm oh, sorry. Uh, extended videos, ad-free videos, bonus content, exclusive content, all kinds of stuff. Sometimes I forget what order I'm saying all that <laughs> stuff in. Uh, so bonus content, exclusive content, ad-free content, all that stuff. Early, you get to see it. You get to be on the ground floor. Members, we appreciate all of our members. And a big shout out to our very own Colonel, Colonel Miles Foreman. Thank you, Colonel. Appreciate you very much. We do content on Tuesdays for Quick Take Tuesday. And of course, our main channel content on Friday. So definitely check us out. Hope to see you again. And uh, until the next video, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And always, TCB. My society, my society, here with all the friends I want to see. Don't need no high society to get me where I want to be. My society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society.